Okay, so the magic that makes this possible is the GP2040 CE firmware. Without it, this, con this project would not have happened. So as a result, all of this is open source hardware, open source firmware. It's a great community. They're very helpful. Check them out if you haven't already. If you need to update your firmware, hold on up select start while plugging in your device to the computer and it'll show up as a flash drive drag and drop that new firmware onto it and it will reset itself once it's done and that's it to configure and get into the web config mode um, press hold on start while plugging it into a computer open a web browser go to 192.168.7.1 and you'll be presented with all of its internal settings that you can change, make sure you save before unplugging, and that will persist between firmware updates and reboots. That uh, web server is hosted internally to the, to the controller, uh, which is a really cool feature and a brilliant way to configure it. Okay, to change the output mode, what I call the output mode, uh, between X input, etc., you're gonna hold one of these four buttons while plugging it in. So A, while plugging in the controller, puts it into X input mode, B, Nintendo Switch, X, PlayStation 4, which you have to provide your own key files and the web GUI, so I'll leave that up to you to figure out, and Y, direct input slash PS3 mode. There are also some other shortcuts. For example, if you hold on up, select and start, or if you press that, that will emulate the home button on consoles like Switch, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 or on X input, it'll activate the home button as well, like if you have it hooked up to Windows. By default, this D-pad emulates the D-pad on the controller, but modern controllers have analog sticks as well. So if you need to switch to left analog stick, simply press left and uh, select and start at the same time, right select and start for the right analog stick, or to return back to the D-pad, down select and start. Now there's one more feature that I really wanted in this firmware and I try really hard to make it as seamless as possible, but because we don't have enough buttons on these controllers, uh, the user's just gonna have to decide if it's something they want to use. And that is built-in turbo. It is not enabled by default. So you're going to want to go into the web config GUI, go to the add-ons page and enable the turbo mode and the pin should already be populated as pin 14. Hit save and then you can unplug your controller. The shortcut for turbo is left, select, and the button you want to enable or disable turbo for. So every, so if it's off and I press Y, it turns it on for Y. Press it again, it turns it off for Y. So you can enable turbo on pretty much any button on the controller that's not part of that combination. Now, to change the rate of fire, to, to make it faster or increase it, press left, up, and select. To decrease it, left, down, and select. And each time you press it, the rate will go up or down. Now I realize there's no visual indication or feedback on what the turbo rate is. I didn't want to drill holes in the controller. This is a no-cut mod, and so as is, you're just going to have to keep track of if you have it enabled and for which buttons. With that, this has been a firmware overview of the Reflex Control project. This Super Nintendo or Super Famicom model is the first of many. I already have prototype boards for all a whole bunch of other controllers on their way to me. Thanks to the GP2040 CE community and developers. Thanks to you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.